knowledge being spread. It's like warm butter across the bread. Smooth, I know you like that. Flow with the grain and don't fight that. You want righteous love, you found the right match. With Marty McFly, they on the right track. Yeah, gotta dig the dirt to plant the seed. Spread roots till you sprout like a tree. Danny Jones, see the one you wanna see. Danny Jones live, this is what you wanna be. It's Danny Jones live, Danny Jones live. Hey, 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 welcome to another fabulous episode of Donnie Jones Live. I am Donnie the Tree Lady hanging out with... That guy, Marty McFly, making it do what it do. And Donnie, how are you? Ooh, you you made that rhyme. See, I couldn't come back with something that rhymes that quick. I couldn't. I'm working it. I'm working it. Man, I I am doing so good right now. You know, the summer, even though the summer's not over, but the seasons are changing and we're all going... The summer is not over. It's not, it's not over. I'm just saying we're going into another season. And so I'm kind of, you know, feeling all of that. You know, I see pumpkins out. I see people with their Starbucks pumpkin lattes oh, and stuff like that. So falling, I'm feeling know, good. What's trees that? Falling and, and, yep, and trees are falling. Yep, trees are falling. All and, of that, man. So well. yeah, man, I'm, I'm doing really, really good. I'm excited about today's show because we have an amazing guest. A uh, wonderful one, today. yes. Yes, yes, a wonderful guest. And the cool thing about it is that she's a she's a woman we've known for a while. She's been on the show before. But, you know, we felt like we needed to have a little refresh, of course, with this, this wonderful woman of God, because yes. she has really t- taken her in her, her ministry to the next level at a time when a lot of people are starting to shrink because of what's going on with COVID. She's starting yes. to grow and she's making her message known to thousands, if not millions. And we just wanted to a chance to kind of reconnect with her, see what she's been up to. And also just as a way to say thank you for the support that she's given us. And I'm talking about none other than Dr. Sint Gilstrap. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for this awesome invitation. Thank you, Miss Donnie, the tree lady, and that guy, that guy, none other than Marty McFly. So thank you so much for having me on with you all tonight. Well, thank oh, you. Yes. And thank you for being the woman that you are, seriously. Um, for the, for the people that don't know, I mean, obviously, we know you are author. We know that you are a, a minister. We know you are entrepreneur. But I want you to delve a little bit. Give the people a little something about who you say you are. And we also- um, that's, that's very interesting that you would say that. I guess, you know, at home, I would say that I am mommy. I would say that I am single parent. I'm grandmother. Um, I'm friend. I'm auntie, sister, cousin, you know, all of those yeah. things. But of course, in the world, you know, I do what I do. So, of course, we wear so many hats. Yes. And then I, I go to work every day. So I actually go to work every day. Somebody brought it to my attention. How do you balance all of this out That's as right. just one person? I said, you know what? You just do what you have to do. You just get right. in and make it happen. So you know, that's just who I am. I'm down to earth. Um, what you see is what you get. I'm that's not right. trying to change. You know, I'm not driven by numbers. And a lot of people in those society are driven by numbers. Right. You know, I got to make this amount of money. I got to make this amount of money. I'm driven by right. what the assignment that God has placed right. on my life. I'm trying to do what he's instructed me to do one soul at a time, one person at a time. Mm-hmm. If that's coaching, if that's teaching, is that if that's developing, whatever it takes for me to get, do my part. That's what I'm trying right. to do. So, well, and, and you're doing it and you're doing it beautifully. One thing I didn't Thank mention, you. which I should mention, is that you're also a show host. You have your own show um, yes. every Friday. Tell people how they can find it. And, how, and we're going to get into the meat and potatoes of what you and, and why we're so excited about having you on the show. But I want you to tell people um, about your show. It was so amazing. Real quick, I'm going to share my story. Real quick, um, God placed in my spirit, and I didn't tell anybody because I was just like, I'm not doing this. I don't have time to do it. Like, I, there, There's no way I can do this. Like, How do I fit all of this, what I'm already doing, into my schedule? The yeah. old young lady from Louisiana sent me a text message and said, I saw you on TV. 
I saw you on, with your own show. I said, no way. And I told, I said, who, who told you that? Did, I, I know I didn't tell you that. Yeah. So um, now I do have my own TV show. Uh, it's Down the Earth Talk with Dr. St. Gilstrap every Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central. Um, so I'm excited about what God is definitely doing. Um, so you can find me uh, on St. Gilstrap Ministries.com or at... Um, What's the name of my other thing? Hold on one second. It's called, uh, I got so much. <laughs> hey, what do you say? What do you say? So if, if you don't mind, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, the show, though? Because, yeah. uh, you know, the other night we, we came on, but I want to know a little bit more about the show. And uh, what is it all about? The other, well, the other day, you know, I asked God, I didn't want to just have a ministry show. Right. I didn't want people to come on this show and just talk, you know, just minister and preach. We yeah. get that all the time, but I wanted my show to be different. So we come on and we talk about the issues of life that they don't discuss in church or people are afraid or ashamed or too embarrassed to discuss. Right. So those, that's my platform. I want people to come on down to earth talk and talk about down to earth issues. Exactly. So we open it up. We don't discriminate if you're a believer, if you're a non-believer, it's open up to the world. So right. the platform that I have down to earth talk is open up so that we can literally dialogue on every topic, every situation. It doesn't matter. And nothing is too big, nothing is too small, just depending on that individual guest uh, comfort level. So this is the vision that God has given to me. But And I'm praying that, you know, someone here so far is so good. You know, I've received great remarks and response yeah. from them. So this yeah. is the vision that God has given me from down to earth. And and anybody so Sorry, has anybody chewed you out yet or cussed you out on uh, on YouTube? Or yeah, like, no, it haven't came yet. It yeah. haven't came Man. yet. I'm gonna uh, tell you, but I'm serious. It's coming. It's coming. You gotta build the hang up a little I'm, bit. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna commend you on that because I, even at our show, Donnie Jones Live, you know, people know that Marty is a minister. We, you know, even though he's a media personality, Marty McFly, and you know, I'm a person of faith. I'm not. I do not put a label on me, but I'm a believer um, in God. And so we talk about a, a lot of stuff um, that either stems from the church or should stem from the church. That some of it's positive and some of it's negative. And, and then whenever we talk about the negative, we talk about the fact that there are things that need to be talked about that aren't talked about. And one Absolutely. of the things that you and I connected is that we both were big victims of sexual violence. We yes. both were victims of domestic abuse. Me at the hands of my dad. And then obviously you can talk about um, the, the things that you went through. But, uh, and then my dad was not the sexual abuse. He was just the, the beat him up, you know, hit him in a face whatever with a fist and the sexual abuse was um, a teenage date rape. So, but yeah. when I went to someone about this, it was like kind of, let's, you know what, you didn't die. You're going to be all right. You know what I mean? You know, sometimes, you know, these things happen and then bam, and it's kind of swept them the rug. But when you're a young woman, you live with that trauma unless right. you address it. And one of the things I like about your show is that you actually talk about these things. And I know Marty wanted to ask you a question pertaining to something that's going on in the news right now and how you felt about it. And it pertains to sexual abuse and, and, and domestic abuse. Yeah. You know, I don't know if we have a, a lot of time on this segment, but I, I, I wanted to get your opinion on this R. Kelly trial on this R. Kelly situation um, and just wondering, and I don't even know what the question I wanted to ask, but if you one been following it and, you know, with, with, cause we know your story, you, you shared it with us in the past. Um, what long-term damage are these girls or these women going through to, um, is this something that, you know, the media, I know the prosecutor being the, uh, his defense is saying, well, they're all about the money. You know, they 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 change their their ways or viewpoints about this because the relationship went south. Um, what would be your thought about this whole uh, situation? Um, and I'm just kind of curious about your viewpoints on it. The first thing I want to say is that uh, R. Kelly, they I'm quite sure many knew a long time ago that he had a disease. Yeah, uh, many people knew, but because he was so uh, into 
inclined or he was a lyrical genius that they overlooked the fact that he was making people millions of dollars. So they swept it under the rug. Uh, I think he should have gotten the adequate amount of help that he needed back then in those days. I do believe um, my opinion very strongly is that things are exposed when money begins to run out or when you tell the person no. And I feel like it does play a major part or component to why he's been exposed as much as he actually have because at the end of the day I don't care what people say money can buy silence and so though he have a disease and though he's sick uh, I feel like when they knew that it occurred the first time I think he was dealing with Aaliyah someone then should have stepped in and said then okay you need to seek some help because this is molestation That's she's right. way beyond your years for you That's to right. date her you know Aaliyah's parents should have said something some guardian over her, you know, who she was should have been said, you know, something should have been stated. However, uh, as a uh, um, person that has been molested and that has been raped, it's, it, it could be long-term trauma. It just depends on the person's strength to want to recover. Recovery is always important and imperative based on the simple fact that you've got to make a choice in the decision. My difference was I made a decision to get up. I made a decision right. not to die. I made a deci decision to forgive my assailant. I made a decision that I wanted to live. And I wanted to live past my trauma, past my drama, past my issues, past my pain. And I wanted to take my pain instead of cocooning it. I wanted to take my pain and transform it. Yeah. I wanted to show people how to transform your pain now so that you can live a productive life. And that's what I've done with my life. So I've been use as an example to say and and no one can tell me that if you decide to live that it's not possible yes i had heartaches yes i had pains i had many broken relationships yes i was promiscuous yes i went through divorce yes i went through homelessness so no one can tell me um the transition of what dealing with pain was actually like after being a molested child or being a rape victim so you got to make a, a decision to want to live Mm. And real quick, we're about to take a break. Uh, let people know how to get in contact with you again. Um, you know, because I think that you you have a message. You know, you have something to talk to and put into other people's spirit. So how can they reach you? They can reach me at singillstrapministries at gmail.com. They can also reach me at uh, singillstrapministries.com. They can re reach me. They can Google me if they need to at St. Gilstrap uh, Enterprises. Uh, they can find me there in singillstrapenterprises.com. Uh, I'm on Facebook. Instagram, Twitter, I'm on LinkedIn. So I'm on all so social media outlets. So they can definitely find me. It's St. Gilstrap is spelled C I N T. Gilstrap, G I L S T R A P. And it's important because, you know, you know, yeah, because a lot of people call me. Clint. I love our audience. I love our fans. But, you know, some of us are on the mature end. And yes. we slow it down. And, so that and, and many times up. they'll put a, they'll slide an L next to exactly. the C. Yeah, right. right. So thank you for clarifying that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We're going to take a quick break. You're listening to Donnie Jones Live with Donnie Jones, a certified arborist. And Marty McFly, the certified production extraordinaire media personality. Go for it, man. Yes. <laughs> we'll be right back. Hey guys, I'm Donnie the Tree Lady, owner of Don's Tree Service. We are an Atlanta-based tree service serving all of Metro Atlanta. And you know what? We proudly serve the underserved. And not only that, when we cut down your trees, we don't charge extra for cleaning up. So give us a call at 770-413-8733. That's 770-413-TREE. Check out Don's Tree Service online or at www.donstree.com. Don's Tree Service. Hey, this is Marty McFly. Now, if you've listened to the show, there's not a secret I'm a minister. I'm actually a pastor of a church, a wonderful church in East Point, Georgia, called St. Mark Lutheran Church. And what I want to do is invite you to one of our services, or any of our services. See, our service is online, on YouTube, and it's free. You ain't got to pay for it. You ain't even got to do offering. But I invite you to share with me in worship, you know, and just check it out. 
If you like it, subscribe. And you can actually uh, send me a message or a question. But it's St. Mark Lutheran Church with Minister Marty Ringer. You can actually log on right now and have church with me. That's St. Mark Lutheran Church with Minister Marty Ringer. Hi, I'm Donnie the Tree Lady, owner of Don's Tree Service and author of my book, From Failure to Fabulous. From Failure to Fabulous is my story about taking my life from being an abject failure to building a fabulous life that I absolutely love. And I'm hoping that you'll take the time to check out my book, From Failure to Fabulous. Get your copy of this inspiring book by Donnie Jones, entitled From Failure to Fabulous, available now on Amazon and DonnieJonesLive.com. Hey, hey, welcome back to Donnie Jones Live. I am your certified arborist, Donnie the Tree Lady. And I am that guy, Marty McFly, making it do what it do. So, you know what? I do got a question for both of you this right now. Okay, but for both well, can of you. Can we just remind oh. the people who listen to? Would they, would you guys, if you've just you just tuned in, you are listening to Dr. Sint Gilstrap. She is an author, an entrepreneur, and a minister. So if you all are anybody to listen to and you ain't quite with the whole scene that's going on right now, this is a woman that you might want to plug into. And right now we are talking about real life stuff that a lot of times people don't want to talk about in the church. Right, so, in the church is the things that, you know, in the... It's a society that happens in the church because I'm thinking of like the R. Kelly thing and Aaliyah like you had just brought up. And this is something that I'm really kind of curious about because if you've heard in the news, her parents, Aaliyah's parents are like, no, they never did nothing like that. Them girls just lied. My girl was an angel. She was sweet. Aaliyah never did nothing wrong with that man at all. What? And all them girls are making it up. Yes, I was reading that, that story actually this morning. And oh it's like... God. You have parents that it's like the world in knows. Denial. Right. In denial. In That's denial. In denial. That's you denial. know, because I'm saying, if you think about it, this is my 13 year old, 14 year old, you know, with this. And, and, he, and he was talking about marrying her. If he didn't marry her, he was talking about marrying okay, her. So, so, so he and he was what, like 25, 26 years old then. Okay, to catch you up, just to catch you up. Um, when she was 15, he was 27, and he got her pregnant. And with that, he rushed back, um, and they got a fake um, um, marriage certificate saying that she was 19. So the, the 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 pastor that married him, he didn't know anything about them. You know, he just doing it as a, a friendly favor. But mm-hmm. they were they were um, getting married because he thought that he had her pregnant, and the only way to get out of that. Um, you know, under age law, um, he had to try to marry her. So, but then afterwards, the family found, you know, found out about it and got it annulled. However, I don't understand why- but she wasn't, pre- he thought she was pregnant, but she wasn't, right? Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure if it ever came out that she was pregnant or not. Okay. You know, but I know he he came back and married her on the assumption that she was, he was pregnant. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Right, so, um, the, the, you know, the rest of that, the other part I can't, I don't know for a fact that if she was pregnant or not, but right. um, it, 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 it's a thing where this 13 year old is hanging out with the 27 year old. Where is the parent at? Exactly. And when, that was and, my and, question. Right. And, and at the same time, here's the thing we said, you know, part of your show, you have things like that that happens in the church too. You know, mm-hmm. that is like, Oh, well, Deacon Scott, he always likes to take, you know, Madison home, you know, <laughs> And it's you like, hit the nails on the head. Huh? You know, and, and one day she said, well, mommy, I, I, I really don't want to, I don't want to ride with Uncle, you know, Deacon Scott. Oh, girl, don't just leave that alone. You know, he just don't, he don't really treat me right. I don't believe that. You know, you just making certain things up. Now, I say that, you know, and I'm not criticizing, you know, the church because some, there are great deacons out there and I'm not putting them out there because they're great workers. There's good guys like However, you. Right. However, said. however, right. You, I am so curious about the overseers of the children, you know, because the same thing with R. Kelly. It was uh, a, a young boy who was in his teens, you know, working at McDonald's. And the same thing. The first meeting was with the parents. The second one was with him by himself. Yeah. The next one was him by himself. Okay. We already talked yeah. about it on the last show. Right, right, right. You know, I you, you already can paint the picture. But right. so, you know, with that, 
Um, you know, we can, we can, we can, if y'all want to, we can change the subject and get on a. No, actually, I want to address it because something yeah, you said that was so me. profound. And what we don't address uh, in church is what needs to be dressed somewhere. And uh, though, and you all may not know, but I have my own um, coaching and counseling facility as well. I mean, um, services as well. And they're online at R R three coaching and counseling at um, gmail dot com. But I want I want to say this. Uh, I have coached and mentored so many women uh, and men, just a few men, though, because men, I, I don't know, they have this shell against women that, you know, try to bring them through this. Right. But so many young ladies that have been molested by deacons in the church. Um, one one young lady specifically, her story hit my heart so that it just did something to, uh, just earth shattering to me to know that he would lock her in a closet, come back and get her, and nobody never looked for her. That bothered me. Oh, wow. that that bothered me. Oh, they were he wow. doing service while he was upstairs. She was downstairs in a closet with mops and brooms and buckets and different things wow. like that. And to know that no one looked for her, no one thought about, well, you know, where is the little girl, you know, with the three ponytails of the little plaques? Why has she been gone so long? Right. You don't go to the restroom that long as to know okay. that no one looked for her. And this was an ongoing situation for years. Yes. So these things wow. occur in the church all the time, you know, but why are they not addressed? They're not addressed, in my opinion, is because a lot of men of God have to be exposed and they don't want to be exposed. That's Watch this, and I'm getting ready to mess your audience up because back in the slavery days, a lot of our color came through what you call buck breaking. And you had a lot of right. slave owners that molested uh, men in front of their children, men in That's front of right. their wives, men in right. front of the people that was in the compound where the other slaves were. So guess what happened? They felt like that was a learned behavior or environment and they passed it down and began to molest their boys, began to molest the men and the men began to molest, watch this, the girls that was in their family that didn't even belong to you. That wasn't your right to do and nobody came back to address the issues that buck breaking was wrong and who gonna kill that demon? Because that keep transferring Fern through uh, generations, generations and yeah. somebody got to stop that. That's right. Well, I think that's one of the reasons why we're talking about these things. We talk about hard subjects subjects on this show, not just because it's, you know, it, it gets your ear, but because we want to see people finally stand up and say no more. We want moms and dads and aunties and uncles see that person over there or that cousin or that nephew doing something that don't look right and actually address it. I remember being at a family event uh, outside was somebody else's family event that I was invited to. And there was an older man there that kept inviting this 11 year old girl. This was right around Christmas and we were around the Christmas tree and there was ladies in the, in, on the other side of the room in the kitchen making hot chocolate and, you know, potato salad and all that kind of stuff. Well, he kept saying, hey, sh sweetheart, just come sit on my lap. And the girl didn't want to do it. And he's like, come on, sit. And the whole group that was there, there was rumors about this dude. There, there was, there was an uneasiness uh -huh. about him. Like people, oh, you know, he's so crazy. You know, like it was a known thing that this dude had issues. And so he kept, you know, saying, oh, come sit on my lap. But she kept saying, I don't want to. So finally she gives in and sits, goes towards her. And I said, sweetheart, come here. I'm in the kitchen. I said, sweetheart, come here, yeah. come here. And she and I locked eyes and she knew that I knew that his behavior was inappropriate and she came in the kitchen and helped me finish, you know, making uh, what we were making in the kitchen. And that, but my you thing know, is, why, how is it a group of adults don't speak up? What is that about? It, it, it they, we feel like it's not our business. It's not our place, you know, but I, I agree with you. Cause I am like, where are the adults? Where are the ones that stand up and say that's wrong. And I see it going wrong, you know, um, being silent sometimes is the most evilest thing that you can do to somebody. Preach, Marty. You know, Preach. being just like, I, I see, but I'm wearing my sunshades on today. Yeah, so, I, 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 you know, so you, hopefully you don't see my eyes looking at your mess. 
but I can see what's about to happen. Let me say my song. I, I uh, will say my song to y'all. I'm starting with the man in the mirror. Yeah. And what happens is that men and women have to now look at the, well, the yeah, embarrassment of their true. shame. They yeah. want they don't want to identify what's true and what's real. So they'd rather turn their back or sweep it under the rug. And I think Donnie and I talked about sweeping uh -huh. stuff under the rug yeah. and then yeah. act like your man not sleeping with your child. Come on you now. dressing her up. Oh. And you're That's not right. making her go get in the bed, or you turning your back because yep. he wants your child, and you just so you can have a man in the bed with you, then you're yeah. willing to watch this, pay a fee just so he can stay in the house, and you can say you have a man, but you'll use your child. That's pimping and prostituting That's mothers right. and fathers right now in our community. And these women know that these men are doing it. They, 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 and it's, it's, so, it's so sad because if it's obvious to me, you and I, then I truly believe that it's obvious to the mama and she's just choosing mm -hmm. to do this to her child. To I don't her think face. a lot of this stuff is, is just, it just happens and she has no clue. I just That's don't probably. believe it. You know, I just don't. Yeah, you, I, you know? And that goes back to what Marty was saying about R. Kelly. I think money talks. I don't care what nobody say. When the money run out and when you say no, when he stands, he stands up and say no, then he's going to be exposed because you paying me to keep my mouth quiet. But now if I don't have money to, you know, feed the appetite of my lifestyle, then yeah, I'm getting ready to talk. Or uh, either you're going to give me some more money and I'm going to stay silent. So yes, I feel like a lot of the parents knew because you cannot tell me that your child stand out at two, three, four o'clock in the morning. I don't care if you sit in the studio or not. You need to go to school you need and to I'm be, coming to look for you and find oh. you. You need to oh. be in the house because guess what? My mama said after 12 midnight and nothing that open but legs. Come on now. Ooh, the the legs, legs in the hospital. Legs in the hospital. But you know, so, even with that, we're about to take a quick, quick, quick break. Okay. Um, but even with that, these girls were staying in there for days and weeks. You know, exactly. not to communicate. You know, there are... ain't that much important going on in the world. <laughs> oh no, especially if you can't. I'm coming to look for my child. So why these parents was looking for their kids? Right, That's right, right. You know, they like said you know they, they didn't have access to talk to them. But anyway, we got to take a quick break. We are uh, 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 listening or hanging out with the wonderful, beautiful uh, Cynthia Gilstrap, and you're listening to Donnie Jones live. Uh, with Donnie Jones and Marty McFly. And yeah. we'll be right back. Be right back. All right. Hey guys, I'm Donnie the Tree Lady, owner of Don's Tree Service. We are an Atlanta-based tree service serving all of Metro Atlanta. And you know what? We proudly serve the underserved. And not only that, when we cut down your trees, we don't charge extra for cleaning up. So give us a call at 770-413-8733. That's 770-413-TREE. Check out Don's Tree Service online or at www.donstree.com. Don's Tree Service. Hey, this is Marty McFly. Now, if you've listened to the show, there's not a secret I'm a minister. I'm actually a pastor of a church, a wonderful church in East Point, Georgia, called St. Mark Lutheran Church. And what I want to do is invite you to one of our services or any of our services. See, our service is online on YouTube and it's free. You ain't got to pay for it. You ain't even got to do offering. But I invite you to share with me in worship, you know, and just check it out. If you like it, subscribe. And you can actually uh, send me a message or a question. But it's St. Mark Lutheran Church with Minister Marty Ringer. You can actually log on right now and have church with me. That's St. Mark Lutheran Church with Minister Marty Ringer. Hi, I'm Donnie the Tree Lady, owner of Don's Tree Service and author of my book, From Failure to Fabulous. From Failure to Fabulous is my story about taking my life from being an abject failure to building a fabulous life that I absolutely love. And I'm hoping that you'll take the time to check out my book, From Failure to Fabulous. Get your copy of this inspiring book by Donnie Jones, entitled From Failure to Fabulous, available now on Amazon and DonnieJonesLive.com. Donnie Jones okay, we are back with Donnie Jones Live. I'm Donnie the Tree Lady. 
I am Marty McFly that constantly puts his foot in his mouth by saying wrong things. And, you know, right now I'm, I'm real, really speechless, you know, because I said uh, since name wrong, but then she just corrected me and said her name is Cynthia. What was that again? My name is, I'll tell you after the show. <laughs> yes, it's right. Ah. But right now, Marty, it is Dr. Oh, okay. Cynthia. Gill strap. You Dr. guys, we are we are having an amazing Hold conversation with Dr. She spoke in tongues. She said, my name is Sin. Hello, well, I have a hair. I said, oh, Jesus. You know, and then she's going to say, well, that, that's that's a private name. I can only use that in the company of private people. Like, oh. Exactly. I am not mad, but yes, this is <laughs> Sin uh, Gill, Dr. Sin Gill strap. Okay. I'm going to stop. Donnie, that's your, 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 your tag. That's what I heard you do. Okay, well, Dr. Sint Gilstrap, I know we were kind of <laughs> wrapping up talking about the obvious things that have happened um, in the community as far as uh, sexual abuse, molestation and stuff like that. But I want to find out, I like to talk solutions. I like to, to uh, not only address the problems and talk about the problems, but what would you say is something we can start right now as a community, start doing, and then we'll move on to my favorite subject, which is entrepreneurship or something. I don't know. Do you know, the first thing is uh, communication with your children. We can never be too busy that we don't talk to our kids. I remember a long time ago, you know, back in the days that I was growing up, we used to all sit down at the table and have dinner together. There was one TV in the house. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, then there was two, but the TV that we watched all together, we did it together. So my point is communication is always important when you have children, because if you don't communicate with your kids, it'll leave an open door for other things to come in and other people to communicate with them in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. uh, so communication is vital. Don't be too busy. Spend time with your your children. I know, you know, we have busy lives. We want to be entrepreneurs. We want to be ministers, whatever you have going on, but communicate and talk to your children. The next thing is years ago, there used to be a time where there was a village where we don't have villages anymore. Because if you talk to somebody, talk about somebody else's child or talk to them, they ready to fight you. We talking about the parents. Oh, yeah. So again, where is the parental counseling? Because now we're living in a day and time that most parents are trying to be their children's friend yep. there is a boundary and fine line to respect That's and right. parenthood that i draw for my 27 year old you will not call me by my first name i'm still your mom or your mother and you're going to respect me as that you may not like what i say but you're going to respect what i say and i'm going to get it out and say it because at the end of the day uh you haven't lived to be my age but i've lived past your age mm -hmm. so there has to be some sort of wisdom that i'm able and capable capable to share with you, but watch this, that's not with everybody. So there has to be parental uh, coaching and counseling in place to help parents that did not grow up with the the foundation of what entails of being family. A lot of women do not know what family entails, what they entail to be a family. Girl, go go find, let me give you some money. You just go do what you want to do. No, that's oh, no. not being a family. you got to lay a solid foundation. One thing I can reflect on that the Bible says, it says, train up your child in the way that they should go. So when they're old, they won't depart. And even though they make their own decisions, they have their own judgment, you train your child up eventually they're going to come back to their roots and their foundation of which we lay so communication with your children making sure that you have proper understanding about what's going on i know when i was growing up i mean when i was raising my child in my early 20s i was 23 24 when i had her i always asked her did anybody touch you today you know did somebody do something inappropriate inappropriately to you you know what happened at school you know what happened do you have a note for me you know you communicate to make sure Sure, that you're now building that trust factor in you and your child's relationship as well as communication. So if she's ever or he ever frightened, they have the open door policy that they can come and talk to you and you just not push them away. I don't have time for it. I'm trying to be with my man. I ain't got time for it. I'm trying to be with, you know, my dude. No, no, no. You got to open the avenues Absolutely. to allow them to come in and feel comfortable enough to yeah. share whatever they want to with you. Yeah. And the other, to piggyback on what you just said, they have to learn how to be a parent. 
They have to learn how to communicate with their kid. This may sound really basic, but even before, when I knew I had fallen in love and I knew I wanted to have kids, and even before I knew I'd fallen in love, I used to watch parents that I knew were good parents. And I would ask them for advice on what it would take to be a good parent. I read books, I listened to television shows, I watched blogs, I Googled stuff. I mean, I did whatever I felt like I could do to give myself some kind of leg up on how to communicate with my child so that I could wind up with a better result than I seen coming out of my own home when I was and, and, and have and a sorry, relationship. What? One thing, let me add this into it, Donnie, and giving your child, giving kids everything don't make them good. Right. It makes them irresponsible and spoiled. Teach your children responsibility because yeah. if you teach them how to be responsible, then they'll learn the foundational things about life. That's right. And kids actually need boundaries. Yeah. Sometimes if, if mama and daddy don't even know, have boundaries, how are you going to teach your kids boundaries? You know what I mean? Yeah. They Absolutely. don't even know what boundaries look like. You know, and I'm I'm just telling you what you just said is so powerful. Right. They need to figure it out. You right. know? Yeah. If I could just say this one one quick thing, because I heard this a while back, and it's has stuck with me. It's more important than is well. It's not about what you leave for your children; is what you leave in your children. Ooh, exactly. The most exactly. Some kids, Marty. You know, I, no, I don't. <laughs> you know, I'd be one of them people like he beating them kids all the time. He was not fit for a parent. You know, this is the kind of person because I, I don't have patience. See, I think God know knew what he was doing with me. And it's something that you had said earlier, Sin, you know, with that Bible uh, uh, verse that you had said about raise the child as, as they should go, you know, as you know. But if you don't know how to go, there, that's you what train, to train the child, you know, because I'm saying a, a lot of a lot of parents, you know, mothers or, or, you know, fathers, too, they don't know how to be parents. You know, they Reed. were taught to be parents. And even going right. to your back to your uh, your buck, what you was talking about in slavery, that was a way that actually broke up the family because they That's would right. put the man out there and molest him and beat him. So that woman, that wife is looking at her husband, who's supposed to be the protector, getting beat down, losing his dignity. How can I put my faith in him? You right. know, that's your daddy getting his tail with, you know, they, they, they lose all hope for the man. Right. And then it's like a, a repetitive cycle, you know, but that's no here or there. But going back to um, we are trained to we're trained the wrong way, yeah. you know, absolutely. Goal, you know, and, and it goes, of course, it's the sexual thing. And then it goes farther than that, that we are. We're we're messed up sometimes. Yeah, you know? yeah, it goes back to Jim Crow. I mean, yeah. exactly what the man said whenever he wrote what he wrote in the Jim Crow law. It right. exists today. They they, they literally they have demasculated the man in the household, and so now they made the man. I'm talking about the black male figure look yeah. as yeah. if he's not valuable or there's no need or use for him. I'm focusing on that component. Why? Because a lot of men uh, um, that I I know in my dad's time, younger or older, I'm now trapped as a little boy on the inside trying to figure out how to be a man because right. they never was able to learn because why? They didn't have that sit down men because in my dad's time, men used to sit around and they had men conversation and they would train and develop or mature some of the young boys. I'm not talking about every man did this so because they didn't. I'm talking about real conversations of how to be a provider, what it takes to take care of your family, how to lay the foundation and things of this nature. You don't see that anymore. In my dad's time, as I was growing up, you seen more uh, absent fathers yes. than you did now and today. Now the, the bridge is being re uh, uh, form or uh, reformulated. Now it's coming back together. Where a lot of younger generation and uh, millennials are saying, "I'm not, I'm not leaving my kids out like that. Not like my dad did me. I'm not like my mom did me." Because the door swing open both ways. That's right. And what you said was that uh, uh, the fact that a lot of women and 
men don't know how to be parents. That is so true because they did not have the role models that they need in their own environment to mimic their own behavior. So now the streets had to train them. The streets had to develop them. The streets had to mature them. And now they don't know. So what they get off of just cussing the child out and get out my face and so and so and so and so. That's how that child, watch this. Now that's a learned behavior for that child instead of seeking the proper guidance or help that they need in order to be a better parent. Why is it so embarrassing for us as parents to ask someone that knows how to do it, even if it's not perfect, but they doing it better than us, why we can't ask them for help? Oh, believe me, I had to swallow my pride because there were parents that I felt were in better that better understood child psychology, that understood how to set boundaries without physical, you know, intervention. And they were able to raise what I perceived to be as good kids. And these people are now wonderful adults and they have great relationships with their parents. I had to, as a young woman go, I don't know how to do this. How did you do this? How did you get that result? And going back to what I said before, reading. You know, a lot of times, if you've been through something, you know what you don't want. So you can, yeah. even though you may not know how to get where you want to go, you know you don't want to go back to where you came from. Mm -hmm. And the only way to do that is to make a decision to change. And you go, okay, well, change to what? Change, just change and go, I'm going to do something different. And then start getting the tools, putting yourself in a, a certain environment, start educating yourself. And right now with Google, I don't want to hear it. I really don't. Between Google and YouTube, I don't want to hear it. I just don't know. I, there's so much stuff right now, even in my business where I go, I don't know how to do this. I, 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 and I, I want to throw a little salt in, in, in what you just said. I want to throw right. just a little, a little teaspoon of salt. Every person, watch this, uh, every male, uh, or whoever the parent is, really, um, <laughs> based on an educational system, yeah. are, are reading on a third grade level. That's so true. many people should pick up a book and read, but they can't read. But that's, because what they I said. Been that's why I said, wait, 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 wait. You mean that I read on most average level right now? You know what, Marty? Why are you not yep. Marty? I'm okay, and you're, you're right. They do a lot of, and it's, it's actually proven that a lot of us read on a third grade level, guess what, get third grade level books that can explain this to you or watch a video or ask a, or somebody else that you know that has a result that you want, Marty. Exactly. I, I, I just gotta, you know, just read the room right now and just say, we gotta take a quick break. So, no! okay. Uh, yeah, 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 but we're gonna pick this up on the other side, you know, but this is really, 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 really fascinating and, and, and good. So uh, Donnie, I messed up last time, so you gotta do the, <laughs> uh, you listen to, to Donnie Jones live. Donnie Jones live yeah. with Donnie Jones and Marty McFly and the wonderful, illustrious, beautiful Dr. Scent Gilstrap. You guys yeah. check her out on all four own platforms and social media. By the end of the show, we she'll be giving that information out again. But if you're getting some out of this, please go to YouTube, like, share, and subscribe. Yes. And give us a call at 1 888 349 uh -huh. Donnie. That's 1 888 349 Donnie. And let us know what you think of the show. Yes, and we'll be right back. It's Donnie Jones Live, Donnie Jones Live. It's Donnie Jones Live, Donnie Jones Live. It's Donnie Jones Live, Donnie Jones Live. Hey guys, I'm Donnie the Tree Lady, owner of Don's Tree Service. We are an Atlanta-based tree service serving all of Metro Atlanta. And you know what? We proudly serve the underserved. And not only that, when we cut down your trees, we don't charge extra for cleaning up. So give us a call at 770-413-8733. That's 770-413-TREE. Check out Don's Tree Service online or at www.donstree.com. Don's Tree Service. Hey, this is Marty McFly. Now, if you've listened to the show, there's not a secret I'm a minister. I'm actually a pastor of a church, a wonderful church in East Point, Georgia, called St. Mark Lutheran Church. And what I want to do is invite you to one of our services or any of our services. See, our service is online on YouTube and it's free. You ain't got to pay for it. You ain't even got to do offering. But I invite you to share with me in worship, you know, and just check it out. If you like it, subscribe. And you can actually uh, send me a message or a question. But it's St. Mark Lutheran Church with Minister Marty Ringer. You can actually log on right now 
and have church with me. That's St. Mark Lutheran Church with Minister Marty Ringer. Hi, I'm Donnie the Tree Lady, owner of Don's Tree Service and author of my book, From Failure to Fabulous. From Failure to Fabulous is my story about taking my life from being an abject failure to building a fabulous life that I absolutely love. And I'm hoping that you'll take the time to check out my book, from failure to fabulous. Get your copy of this inspiring book by Donnie Jones, entitled From Failure to Fabulous, available now on Amazon and DonnieJonesLive.com. Donnie Jones Live. Y'all need to get some of the behind the scenes stuff. I don't know how we can do this, but we, we need... You're listening to Donnie Jones Live, and we are cracking up over here with Donnie Jones, Marty McFly, and Dr. Sint Gilstrap. She is gracing us with her presence. Right before the break, we were talking about how we can make a change um, mm-hmm. and change this generational curse of child molestation, sexual abuse, and just sweeping stuff under the rug and having a real conversation yeah. about seeing real change in our community. So we were talking about mm-hmm. that. You know, um, you know, one or two more uh, suggestions, and then we're going to move on to what I want to talk about as far as what you're doing, and I'm so proud of. Mm-hmm. Um, I, 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 if if I could throw this in, if I could remember what my statement was, because I had a good one, I okay. really had a good one. No, uh, yeah, but about change, though, I think change. The biggest key about change is if we we were tapping, we were touching on it at the end of the last segment, but reading, educating yourself, yeah. you know, going to to, to seminars, saying. Being exposed to new things, even your, the youth, you know, letting them see that there is another way of life. That's right. Letting them see that there is something else to do versus dribble a ball, run a football, be a rapper, you know, because um, um, those are, are short lived successes, right. yeah. you know, but really teaching them. And, and then at the same time, once you are older, still read. Still, you know, don't don't stop your education. Just reading is fundamental. Right. It's fundamental. Reading is fundamental. And the more that you do read, the better your reading gets. Yeah. You know, you know I remember uh, one time because I work in an educational system. I remember we took our kids downtown to the Fox Theater and many of the children were so amazed from the county that we were in, which is 20 minutes from downtown Atlanta, would make statements about, oh, we went out of town to another state. Do the people here talk the same language that we talk? And it was 20 minutes outside of oh. Atlanta. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. They had no yeah. idea because they had never been downtown Atlanta before. And mm-hmm. what you're saying is so important because we need to expose our children to more surroundings that watch this, show them productivity, uh, show them prosperity versus yeah. having them in um, poverty stricken situations or environment that make them feel like they're unproductive as citizens because that uh, germinate on the inside of them and then, yeah. then it became, comes to take root. That's right. Right. You know, it, it, be careful it, what you feed your mind, body, and spirit. Right. Exactly. It, it's funny. My high school sweetheart, the girl I was dating in high school, it's funny. I knew it wasn't going to work out. Because I'm like, you know, what is your dreams going to be? I'm saying I love that she was perfect in all other ways, but the, her imagination was so closed, you know, because I, I had just moved from Ohio and went to a rural part of Georgia where a lot of people didn't get out of that yeah. town or community. And so I'm, I'm, I remember a conversation saying, you know, I want to have the big house. You know, I want to have the picket fence. You know, I want to have the 2.5 kids and the dog and everything. And our own businesses and this, this, this. And she said, you know... I really just want a trailer bricked in. That would be so cool. That's all I, that's what I want. A trailer, maybe a double wide. I can see a double wide, but bricked in. And piece of land, I'm good. Uh, because she hadn't been exposed to anything right. else. Exposure. Absolutely. That's all she could see. That's right. You know, and sometimes you have to understand that people are, they can't go farther in life because they're afraid. They won't step out there. So it's like they'll never move out of their community um, because they're terrified of the big city or terrified of change. You know, um, that's why I'm trying to shift this into entrepreneurship, where yeah. even with with people that have been working at nine to five and they say, I have something on my heart and I yeah. want to change and I want to do something different. Like Donnie was saying, read a book, 
make small changes. And next thing you know, you can make that small business idea yeah. into a reality. You know, like yeah. Miss Scent, like Dr. Scent. Okay, we know that she was an inspirational speaker, you know, when I first met her, but now having her own platform. Um, Donna, you wanted to have a conversation a little bit more. Yeah, I wanted about her. to talk about the fact, and we, you know, I think we've talked enough on this, this subject that y'all got more than two things from Dr. Sant, so she don't need to go into the two things. But one thing I, that um, I'm sorry. I admired about, no, 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 the one thing I did admire about you that I do want to get in before um, the show wraps is that. I've seen you grow your platform. I've seen you grow your ministry in the middle of what people are saying, you know, with this pandemic. And I've seen other ministries shrink. So what is it your, what mindset or what happened when, when last year happened and you were like, okay, I got to keep my ministry going. What was the shift that you made that maybe you could teach other people in this moment? Um, I made a decision to quit. I made a decision to get up. I made a decision to, it's three words that I'm focusing on this season. And one is risen, one is rise, and one is arise. I made a decision, one, not to quit. Quitting in my mind is not an option. Um, my mom has been deceased now since 2002. And she's always told me and her children, uh, we know that Charlene and her kids. So it's always been told, if you start it, you better not quit it. And so quitting was not an option for me. I made a decision to push harder. I made a decision to strive harder. And I always have told uh, my me and my daughter, we have a mantra because I was a single parent. It's me and you against the world. I've told her from a little bitty girl, I said, mommy going to fly the world. I'm a, you know, we're going to live big, you know? So that was my mantra. So in my heart, it's a promise to me to fight hard for my kids. And now I have a granddaughter. I fight even harder because I want to be the parent that leave a legacy and an inheritance for my children. And I want them to be able to say my mom or my grandmother left this foundation for us and now we're carrying it on mm -hmm. and that's important for me I fight hard every day mm -hmm. knowing that I'm a step closer to be the successful entrepreneur or businesswoman or minister that I can allow my kids to just step into my shoes and just keep it moving so I fight for them to live every day on behalf of myself and God I don't want to fail God in, most of all I don't want to fail him I said that if I could um, be number one in the world, if I can be at every club, every party, if I can have every drink, no, every bartender in the city, then when I gave my life to Christ, I was going to do it completely. And quitting on the Lord will have made me feel like a failure. And I wasn't willing to do it. So it just pushed me even more. And especially as a, a, a divorced woman and as a single parent, I'm very challenged on what I do because most people feel like you can't do this and you're not married. Mm -hmm. But as, until God sent me the husband he wants me to have, I have no choice but right. to keep moving. Uh, you, uh, you know, um, <laughs> that's awesome. Like the, 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 that the, is the, that that's powerful stuff, right? Uh -huh. there. What and keep, uh, I was gonna say, you know, Paul said, you know, if it was him, he wouldn't even get married. He just do his thing, <laughs> but. uh that's that's a whole different. Sent wants to be like Paul. Do you sent? Uh, uh, want to get married? <laughs> <laughs> just, just. I'm gonna just, have to. Uh, anyway, you know, sent. I I just want to say thank you for what you're doing. You know, your inspiration. Um, and keep doing your thing. Absolutely. You know, and you know thank that. Thank you. And you already know that whoever God employs, He empowers. So He's empowered yeah. empowered you to do this task of inspiring people, making that change, and bringing up those hard conversations. You know that. Uh, some of us don't want to have to, have to talk about, you know, Absolutely. not me. I talk about it all, but we um, all can talk about it all. Yes. But Dr. Sint, what's um so that the people once again know how to get in contact with you? Let them know how to get in contact with you. Also, if you got any new projects coming up or anything you want to give a shout out about, put it out there. Yep. Thank you so much. Um, on uh, every Tuesday I have Testament Tuesday, so it comes on 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on our conference call line. Testament Tuesday, I've been having that now since 2013. Uh, we have a conference call line, 404-891-6566. For those that are interested, Testament Tuesday, 8 p.m.
p.m. Eastern East Standard Time. Um, every every first and third Thursday, I have fuel up station where everyone drive out on Facebook Live and get a fuel up. They get a charge of renewed and energized, you know, infused. There's a word that comes from the Lord every first and third Thursday, and that's Facebook Live. You can find me at Dr. Gil Strapping. It's called the Fuel Up Station. Every Friday, every Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central, I am on Down to Earth Talk with none other than Dr. Dr. Cindy Gilstrap herself, and we talk about down-to-earth topics, and I'm open to uh, allow those that would allow to grace my uh, platform with down-to-earth conversations, so I'm open for that. You can find me at Cindy Gilstrap dot com or you can go to cgm enterprises.com also my magazine have come forth on um, voices yes. of champions uh, magazine voc magazine is on the rise so i'm excited about what god is doing i'm getting ready to take my platform to another level so i'm doing billboards i'm doing um um, uh, author tours and all different types of things we have coming on in the work. So I'm just excited, static. I'm getting ready to uh, write my next book. And this is the other book that I think Donnie is already aware yeah, of. I'm but so I'm getting ready to revamp. So I am a published author. You all can find me. I'm getting ready to have, I'm not a diamond. I'm a Ruby Women's Conference October the 16th in Atlanta, Georgia. It's going to be a full day event. The first part of the morning will be uh, a panel discussion Discussion. The second half would be none other than myself. I'll bring it home. Amen. I'll be ministering that evening at 6 p.m. So those that are interested, again, you can email, you can call, you can Google St. Gilstrap Ministries at gmail.com or St. Gilstrap Ministries.com. Awesome. And St. Gilstrap, once again, is C-I-N-T-G-I-L-S. Did she just she did. in the middle? She did. Yeah, C -I -N -T. I'm telling you, people yeah, just, are way alive. Just. C-I-N-T-G-I-L-S-T-R-A-P dot com. That's who I am. You can also, I'm on uh, YouTube as well. So you can like, share, and subscribe on YouTube at Dr. Sid Gilstrap, Down to Earth Talk. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all right. have been listening to Donnie Jones Live with the beautiful Arborist, uh, Dottie Jones, me, myself, and I, Marty McFly, with the wonderful, uh, talented, just multi-gifted Dr. Sin Gilstrap. You ready to say Cynthia again? I'm I, gonna I, said, up. I, I did it right. I, I'm just, I ain't getting in trouble. No, I'm just spoken <laughs> thank you, Dr. Right, Gilstrap, for being with us. No, we, thank you, thank you, thank you. We honor you, and we respect you, and we thank you. All right? Yeah. Absolutely. Thank and you for having me. And we will uh, uh, be back next week. Uh, thank y'all for checking out Donnie Jones Live with Donnie Jones and me, myself, and I, Marty McFly. Bye-bye. 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 Donnie Jones Live, Donnie Jones Live. 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 Hey, guys. I'm Donnie, the tree lady, owner of Don's Tree Service. We are an Atlanta-based tree service serving all of Metro Atlanta. And you know what? We proudly serve the underserved. And not only that, when we cut down your trees, we don't charge extra for cleaning up. So give us a call at 770-413-8733. That's 770-413-TREE. Check out Don's Tree Service online or at www.donstree.com. Don's Tree Service. Hey, this is Marty McFly. Now, if you've listened to the show, there's not a secret I'm a minister. I'm actually a pastor of a church, a wonderful church in East Point, Georgia, called St. Mark Lutheran Church. And what I want to do is invite you to one of our services, or any of our services. See, our service is online, on YouTube, and it's free. You ain't got to pay for it. You ain't even got to do offering. But I invite you to share with me in worship, you know, and just check it out. If you like it, subscribe. And you can actually uh, send me a message or a question. But it's St. Mark Lutheran Church with Minister Marty Ringer. You can actually log on right now and have church with me. That's St. Mark Lutheran Church with Minister Marty Ringer. Hi, I'm Donnie the Tree Lady, owner of Don's Tree Service and author of my book, From Failure to Fabulous. From Failure to Fabulous is my story about taking my life from being an abject failure to building a fabulous life that I absolutely love. And I'm hoping that you'll take the time to check out my book, 
from failure to fabulous. Get your copy of this inspiring book by Donnie Jones, entitled From Failure to Fabulous, available now on Amazon and DonnieJonesLive.com. He's worthy, y'all. He's worthy.